What's up, what's up? We are live, and this is Chat Combat with Renz Davis and... Vincent MMA Live. What's up, guys? We have a sp very special guest again, San Sayendo. How are you, Mr. The man, the myth, <laughs> the combatant. Hey, how are you, guys? Combatant, no, but uh, myth, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> happy life. There we go. The happy life. Thank you very much. Vincent, Renz, an honor to talk to you guys. How's it going? Thank you Likewise, for being here, sir. sir. It's going quite well. How about you? Top of the world, thank you. That's where I live, right up here on top. <laughs> okay, first That's a very good place to all, live. <laughs> where did Happy everybody. Life Martial come Arts come from? Because I see it on your t-shirts, it's your cat's phrase. Yeah, it's true. It well, from? because I believe that's the ultimate goal here. I mean, what is the point of self-defense? Protecting what you love, protecting who you love. Um, that's what it's all about. So if your training is not giving you fulfillment and confidence and health, and uh, a sense of confidence that you can protect what's yours and who you're with, then what's the point of all that training? You're just sweating for no reason. You're just probably tearing yourself down in some way. So hopefully everything you do, exercise, diet, visualization, everything is pointed at fulfillment, something happy, something that makes your life better. That's what, to me, what self-defense is all about, improving bad situations. I like that a lot. It's a very I life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. I Couldn't see the flag. I'm with you. <laughs> Pursuit of happiness. That's it. The fight for happiness. <laughs> Absolutely, my man. Yeah. I think you're one of the most positive guys on YouTube, to be honest. You know, if you look at martial artists, you know, you have Sensor Set. You have, we had uh, Heart to Hurt, Icy Mike on. I don't know if you know him. I saw that. Yeah, I watched. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. It's, sure. it's an honor. But, you know, you're, in my mind, you're not you're one of not the most positive guy on YouTube. And uh, it's really inspiring to be honest, because, you know, when you look at martial arts, you know, in, of course, if I talk about Rance and me, it's our passion. And of course, it's your passion too, sir. But in, let's say we had a difficult time and, and you know, martial arts schools ha ha have had a difficult time in the, coro you know, with the uh, coronavirus going on and everything. Yeah, like tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. So I also heard that one of your schools closed. Or yeah, teams. absolutely. Yeah, we're so, fighting like uh, like hell over here. It's um, how did how did a very positive guy like yourself how did did that you deal with a loss like that? Well, I think uh, twofold. One, you should already be living a life that prepares you for things like this. Again, that's what self defense is. You already know something bad is out there in the world. Whether it's an attacker, whether it's a virus, whether it's an economic collapse. You should know, you're mature enough to know that life is not all good. And you start Very preparing true. for that, right? You start storing some food, save your money, batten down the hatches, try to provide for yourself before there's trouble. It's yeah. too late when someone's on top of you punching you in the face to say, gee, maybe I should take a self-defense course. Yeah, totally. So, and again, it's not living in fear and paranoia. No, no, the world's a beautiful place most of the time. But self-defense gives you a chance to say, yeah, but what <clears throat> if there was trouble? What would I do? And so the first part of the answer is, I think my wife and I have made pretty good choices to prepare for, okay, if everything goes wrong, if you lose your job, you lose your school, everything stops, could you survive for the next six months, a year, two years? And we've, I mean, I'm 50 years old, so we've had some time to try, to try to prepare for such a horrible thing. So that's one. Two, um, it's just like taking a punch, right? If you get hit and you cry and, <laughs> well, what kind of life is that? What's the, what are you talking about? Even like when you say, thank you very much for saying that I'm a very positive person, but what's the choice? What's yeah. the choice? You may know people who make the other choice. When something bad happens, they play the victim, they blame other people, they self-destruct, they drink, they do drugs, they give right. up. What kind of choice is that? It's eventually it's kind of more, to more bad yeah. situations indeed yeah it doesn't make it better so i think as you get older you realize hey that's a mistake to go that route so now the challenge is how fast can you take a punch and turn around and fight back that to me is the difference between like a master and a beginner maybe you punch a beginner in the face and they time out quit they go home maybe they never come back a master you still get punched in the face i get hit boom but hopefully you can breathe and focus, not feel sorry for yourself, and get right back on the job of defending yourself and doing what you have to do. I'm so, totally on board with you, sir. I, yeah. I really think you have a great view on, you know, be, what, what is being a master, you know, and being a, 
beginner is like but you know with with I, w I would not call you an older guy but a more experienced guy like yourself you know uh, good save vincent <laughs> gray you hair know. great no i'll call myself an old no nah, it's silver man it's silver masters wear silver <laughs> old people wear gray all right you, you, you always need to look out for guys who you know grow old in a, in a world where people die young so <laughs> 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 I like but, that. But to be honest, you know, uh, I, I'm I just turned 21 myself, so I'm a pretty young guy. But I mean, most of people of my age, you know, like you said, they blame the world for uh, stuff that you know goes wrong in their life, and mm. you see that with uh, young upcoming martial artists. You know, some compete, and the ones that mm. aren't afraid <clears throat> to lose and that aren't afraid to, uh, you know, try something else to improve their overall skill. Uh, mm -hmm. They can make it to the top, but the guys that quit right away, you know, they they just uh, will never be great. So I think your mindset is very. Do you think that mindset comes from traditional martial arts? Because you see it a lot of traditional martial arts that you know that they also train the mindset, they also train the, uh, you know, the the mental health, and not only the body. Yes, I mean, I, I would hate to say that um, only traditional martial arts does that. I mean the church religion can do that. Spirituality can do that. Your family could have built that into you and raised you that way. You might have friends who inspired you to be like that. You might see a role model like, Oh, that's Muhammad Ali or that's a, you know, Anderson Silva, these guys, we can all find that same message a million different ways. Study the winners. <laughs> Cause like you said, Absolutely. nobody, Absolutely. nobody gets anywhere without this mentality. The people yeah. who whine and cry and play victim will always be at the bottom. That's just the way it is. So um, all we can do is one for ourselves and our family and our friends, be the best person we can be, take the hits, keep going. And hopefully when someone sees us doing it as a teacher, even if you don't intend to be a teacher, just by you showing up and keep going, someone's going to see you and go, huh, okay, so everyone doesn't have to cry. They at least know there's a choice. If everybody's crying and complaining, well, then everyone's just going to feel good about crying and complaining. Well, that's what we do. We're all losers. Yeah. But when you stick up your head and say, I'm going to keep going, at least they know there's a choice. If they still want to give up, now it's on them. But at least they knew there was a choice and you didn't take it. So that can come from a traditional martial arts program or an MMA program. I think that can come from anywhere. Anywhere you find someone, like you said, in a world where people die young and the good die young, wait a minute, then uh, if someone is older... <laughs> It could be your grandmother. Your grandmother might inspire you to get up and keep fighting, yeah. right? Maybe she's been through some horrible things, and here she is still smiling and making cookies and making a great day. She's a fighter. She's a black belt. She's a master. So, you know, I don't like just looking at martial artists for inspiration because so many of them have failed or they're not great people or they've given up on other things and now they're overweight and they've given up. Um, look everywhere for warriors, for fighters, for people who are not giving up. It's everywhere. There's tons of great fighters out there. I never thought about that, but I will now. You know, you're, you're very right, indeed. It is a good way of looking at it, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of discipline can go from, like, one thing to the next, but it doesn't come specifically from one source, like you said, which is really delightful to know. Teachers everywhere, my friends. Teachers absolutely. everywhere. Even if you're just sitting in your car at a red light, you might see some guy or some – it could be a kid. doesn't even matter. Someone who's got some type of – uh, disability, right? Maybe they've got something's wrong. I don't know, but you just see them for a moment and they cross that street in front of your car. And for a moment you think, "Woo! I wonder if I would have the guts to keep going if I was in that situation. And you like to think that you would. And just seeing that person make it across the street and trying yeah. to live their life, even though they've got some disadvantages, perhaps physically compared to me, their health is not as good as mine. But to see them keep going, even in that one moment, I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're <clears> suffering <throat> with or living with. That's inspiring to me. So that'll be my teacher. Then I'm going to show up at the gym and be like, I'm going to fight even harder today because I just saw this person who has a lot less than I do doing more than I do. So everywhere there are teachers. That's an absolutely so good way to look at it. Indeed. Very good way to look at it. Thanks. <laughs> but you know, Not someone's going to leave a comment that I shouldn't say disability. How dare you? Didn't say disability. I don't know what the problem. What else are they going to say? <laughs> what? What? Well, differently that, abled. Is that differently is, abled? Yeah, I don't. I can't remember. Is that is it really <laughs> a discussion in the state? I still say handicap myself. Well, I'll take, okay, I'll I'm take the weight there. off you. I'll take the weight off you, Ando, and I'll put it Thank on myself. You. They're called <laughs> handicap people. 
I, uh, That's wait, what the government wait. recognizes them as. Just saying, is guys. That right? Guys, really, is that a discussion in the states? Because I don't know anything about it. We just say in the, in oh, the okay. Netherlands, we just say. Uh, so what means it's handicap. part of the weird. It's part of the weird PC thing. You'll find one word that was good to use like five years ago, and that's like, you're not allowed to say that. That word right. is tisk on you, tisk. To be completely honest, that's why I love the martial arts world, guys, because you know everybody's equal on the mat. <clears throat> <clears throat> that is true. I agree. Oh, in, absolutely. In most good gems, that that is, and the yes. gems that you are, want to stay at. Yes, martial <laughs> arts is the most honest place. If it's done right, I agree. It's the most yeah. honest place for yourself and for everyone in relationships. It's just honest. Yeah. I love that. Yes. You've also got humbled every day. I mean, and sometimes I look, you know, like friends of mine that compete at you know a, a higher level than I do, and when I spar with them, I always like. Sorry for the language, I'm such a pushy in comparison to him. <laughs> because, you know, those guys, there's always somebody be somebody that's better than you. So you 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 got to stay humble. You got to stay willing to learn, in my experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. What was your uh, first martial arts that you, that you uh, started out in? Um, I started on my own with uh, Bruce Lee's books in my garage. And I thought that would be good enough. I just wanted to be like Bruce. Great shape, attitude, body control. One inch punch. <laughs> well, yeah, that's bad was, guys. I was never impressed by the one inch punch, that kind of stuff. I didn't, these were books, so that wasn't in the book. Uh, this is before video, before film. <laughs> there were just movies, which I always thought were kind of silly, but um, I'm not a fan of the movies, but I'm a fan of him. I just liked his attitude. And I just thought, oh, well, if you're punching and kicking to get that kind of confidence, then I can do that. So I found those books because I was still a kid. I didn't have a car or anything like that or money. So I found those <coughs> books. And just started trying to piece together what he was doing in the, in the, in the, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do and the uh, Bruce Lee's Fighting Method series of books that someone else put together. Um, and I just tried to do that for as long as I could with friends or my brother or whatever. And, um, but eventually I realized I can't learn. <laughs> I can't keep learning in the garage. I have to go out, find yeah. people better than me, find teachers. Find, there's so much to learn. And I didn't oh, realize absolutely. that really until I saw Steven Seagal. You guys talked about Steven Seagal before. But when I saw oh. him, I can't wait for the question, Rent. <laughs> Don't worry, we have time to build up to the speed round, I promise. <laughs> I tell you what, my little unit. Bruce Lee got me into the garage, but uh, Steven Seagal got me out of the garage and into a dojo because I realized when I saw Above the Law, I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't know what those moves were. And he was a totally different guy. Same confidence and arrogance and, uh, as Bruce Lee, same attitude, but very different body type very different uh, movements and so i Indeed. realized i don't know what this is yeah. so i had to go out and find a school after that i mean you weren't alone man, though, the years, just gonna throw it out there just gonna throw it out there during those movies i've heard all the time that the stunt people were paid a little extra to just kind of let steven kind of go all out i was like man that must kind of be a bummer for those stunt people they walk into a job like hey we're going to do a shooting on a movie what's he doing to my arm oh my arm that must be right. Well, I wasn't there, so I'm not uh, here to disparage <laughs> anybody. Sean Connery himself has told that story about Steven Seagal breaking his wrist. Um, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. I'm just talking about, again, Absolutely. there are teachers everywhere. And what I saw there was enough to make me go, hey, I'm not that smart. I need to find out what this is. I found a book first. I tried to get a book on Aikido. And I looked through the book, and I tried to piece that together. But I realized there's no way. So I uh, like learning Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. just from a book, it's <clears throat> You got to grab somebody. You got to be thrown. You got to feel it. And, what arts um, so that's, you, that's what got me going. What arts did you study, if I may ask? Well, there was no Aikido that I could find at the time where I was growing up. So it started in a Taekwondo school. About a year into that, an Aikido teacher came to that school and started renting mat space. So I was doing Taekwondo a couple of days a week and Aikido when I could. And so I was kind of just going back and forth between those two arts for a while uh, until I moved out to Los Angeles and then I got into uh, Kung Fu. So... Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that in the beginning, but uh, been a Kung Fu guy, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy um, since then. And um, I love it all. So it's, you've it always been a, mixed mar a real mixed martial artist. You didn't well, just stick not to the, one art. I mean, really? I think I like to the term hybrid martial art myself. You were able to use like certain yeah. aspects of Taekwondo and then the Kung Fu and the Aikido. Blast me for saying Aikido, but I said it. <laughs> well, you know, I don't mind it. I think it's a very good. I mean, I've actually talked to Vincent a few times before about Aikido on its own as a standalone martial art. Might not be the best thing for all circumstances, but when you apply it with other martial arts supplements, yeah, like wrestling, for I example. think it's brilliant. It's an absolutely brilliant thing. 
Yeah, I don't think any, first of all, backing up, every martial art is a mixed martial art. Nothing just started pure by itself and that's all they ever did. Judo was a combination of a couple of things that Kano had studied. Aikido was the life's work of many different styles that Osensei had studied. Taekwondo was a meeting of masters in a compilation of things. Karate was a, the original, you know, coming together of different yeah. styles from different towns and came together as kind of one thing for Shotokan. Every style has that same history. So um, everything was in a sense mixed. Then the problems come in when, oh, we have our version of a mixed martial art becomes either a sport, so it goes in one direction and stays there and forgets about what they used to do or where it came from. Uh, Indeed. Or they uh, just put blinders on and don't look what karate. Is doing. What's that? Like with uh, karate at the Olympics? You know, the point karate, karate at the Olympics is definitely an example of how something started off rather broad. The original karate has throws and joint locks and um, yeah. not much ground stuff probably, but more rough limited. and tumble. Very and limited now to see stuff. that get narrowed down to a kata competition or kind of tag sparring competition in a sense – it's just narrower. It's all good, yeah. but it's very narrow. And if you think that's all there is, that's why I'm not a big fan of it being in the Olympics. I would rather that it wasn't because I don't want anyone looking at the Olympics and seeing some elite athlete who's very good at darting in and throwing quick reverse punches yeah. to think, yeah. oh, that's what karate is? I can't do that. That's not for me. But I'm not for me, it. that's the same with boxing because if you look at boxing, it's still an effective martial, arts to, martial art today. But if you look back in the day, like 19, in the 1900s, it's like there was a lot of cleanse fighting. There were some throws. There were a lot of yeah. more like dirty fighting techniques also because that was also used for self-defense. But once sure. it got to be an official sport, you know, the rules came in and rules, you know, rule sets, they make uh, a difference, you know, a difference in how you fight, how you approach things. It's like, it's with point karate. It's like, you know, it's that in and out movement that, you know, that, that, that also Wonder Boy also has. Uh, it gets, how do I say it? You know, it, it, it's that's the sole thing that's that people get to uh, focused on. You know, because yeah. of the rules, and it's the same with boxing. Now it's like you know you can bop and weave beautifully thanks to the rules, but if you try that in kickboxing or in Muay Thai, you get head kicked. So rule rules also allow you to fight a certain way. Mm -hmm. Same with judo. Um, judo has originally kata weapons te techniques. <laughs> it was a much fuller <laughs> art. But then when you get into the Olympics and it becomes popular in the Olympics, then everybody kind of focuses just on what gets you a medal, yeah. not on the whole life art. So this pattern has happened over and over and over again. Um, and, you know, you just, as a martial artist, if you start in one of those styles that's kind of limited in its scope, then you just have to be honest enough again to go, I don't know everything, what else is there? I don't know everything, what else is there? I don't know everything, what else is there? And kind of broaden your horizons a little bit. And yeah. then you end up kind of, creating yeah. these hybrid types of things, which is your own personal journey, trying to piece, piece things together. Yeah, but ideally, so. hopefully you found one-stop shopping where you found everything, but that's pretty rare, I think, nowadays. That is very true. It does seem like, um, it almost seems like a tree almost, like martial arts being a tree does grow up, but if the roots keep growing down and narrow, you know, you're not going to get much, much expansion from it. You need to like let those things branch out and like kind of expand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's why we I also got to talk with uh, <clears throat> professional MMA <clears throat> fighter Jeff Chen. I don't know if you heard of him. I've, I'm sorry. What was the name? Oh, Jeff, uh, Jeff. MMA Shredded. Uh, you know, I don't follow that. I'm sorry. I will now. No, uh, not a problem. <laughs> no problem. But he is really uh, also a real positive guy, you know. And he also thinks of himself as a martial artist first, you know, is and a fighter second. But what mm -hmm. would you say is the difference between, let's say, an MMA fighter and a, a real mixed martial artist it's a, is it in the mentality or is it in the way you behave yourself because you got on one hand in you know in modern modern martial arts you got a guy like gsp and you got a guy like you know john jones and they both outside of the ring they both you know act differently you also have wonder boy and then you have mike perry yeah I had to throw him under the bus <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, to me, the difference isn't so much between uh, MMA sports people versus mar the real difference is between traditional martial artists who are not competing and people who compete. To me, that's the difference. The, I don't think there's what you said was MMA people versus what was the first one? Just uh, no, martial I, I, artists. 
Yeah, I was like saying, you know, fighters like, um, versus martial artists, you know, kind of like uh, you know, some I think what this is trying to act is um, what kind of like separates like, you know, soul martial artists from soul fighters, you know, people that train for like prize fighting mm -hmm. versus people that right. fight, but, you know, they identify as a martial artist and it's like yeah. they could live without fighting. Absolutely. That, that'd be more my category. Um, there's a big difference, I think. Uh, if you're going to be a combatant for money, a professional fighter, your window of time is pretty small and short. Very so true. That's a, that's a short term goal. You've got to train hard and fast. And if at the end of your career by 30 or 32, for most people, probably, um, you don't really care if you've got injuries, you're limping for the rest of your life, you've got brain damage because that was your time to make money. That was your time to make a reputation. That was it. You weren't thinking about what are you going to do when you're 40, 50, 60, 70. Whereas yeah. I think traditional martial yeah. artists are, I, that's all I think about. When I, that's why I got out of Taekwondo because I said, you know, I can't do this when I'm 40 and 50. These high kicks are, I, I can already tell that's not going to work out for me. So I need to start shifting my training into something I think I'll be able to do when I'm 60, 70, and 80 because I want this to be my lifetime, not just something I retire from and then get fat, tell stories. And that's great. Yeah. You're... 20 years old and you're an elite athlete and you got the time and the money for training camps and to go for it. Great. If that makes you happy. That's not me. I'm not an elite athlete. I'm not 20 years old. Uh, I'm not interested in competition or championship belts or money. I'm only interested in being healthy, happy, and safe. So that's a very different set of goals. It's a very, it's a short term goal versus a long term goal. It's yeah. completely different on every level. It's completely different. <laughs> yeah, if I might say so myself, Bando, you are a champion of charisma, so don't let that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like you got that. <laughs> Why? Thanks, Vincent. Thank if you. we have the budget, we're gonna make him a champion of charisma belt. I'm taking it. I, I will it's... wear that proudly. <laughs> <laughs> we need a T-shirt for that, Rance. Once the podcast get, gets gets growing a little bit more, you know, we <laughs> get a T-shirt with the money <laughs> charisma prize, champion. Save the belt, San Sayendo. <laughs> Forget the money you're spending on the belt. Just send me the check for the belt. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll get a custom mug for you because everyone needs a oh. coffee mug in the morning. Absolutely. Oh, my mug's right there. I didn't even grab it. <laughs> <laughs>